Oh, hey, Mia. What did you think about Tom Tradicon's platform? Yeah, I can see how a robot selling lemonade might not fit into his view of what an economy should look like. I agree, you should definitely check out some of the other candidates too. Any ideas about who you plan to check out? Hmm, Mabel Market Force. Sounds like there's some potential there. Let's take a closer look. Oh, so it looks like Mabel Market Force is pushing for a full market economy. Well, like traditional economies, it's based on who answers those three economic questions. And in a full market economy, it's private individuals like yourself who answer the questions. Exactly. You decided to make and sell lemonade. And it was you, with the help of some pretty smart friends, who decided how you were going to produce that lemonade. And you decided who your ideal customers would be and how much you would charge for a glass of lemonade. You're right! Consumers get to decide what products they want to purchase, too. People bought your lemonade because they thought it was a great product at a great price. It was their decision. Of course, they could have also chosen to not buy your lemonade. Let's take a quick second to check in. What are the key differences in how the three basic economic questions are answered in market economies versus traditional economies? Pause the video while you answer. In market economies, the three economic questions are answered by private individuals and businesses, while custom and tradition answer the questions in a traditional economy. Take a second to brainstorm your answer to the following question. How do producers and consumers impact market economies? And don't worry, you don't need the perfect answer right now. Mia, you're a producer who deals with consumers. How would you answer that question? That's right, Mia. Those interactions between producers and consumers would be influenced by forces like demand, supply, and competition. And those would then drive the economy. Consumers have a demand for goods and services, like fresh and delicious lemonade. Entrepreneurs take the risk to start businesses to provide those goods and services in order to make a profit, like when you started your lemonade stand. Consumers purchase goods and services from businesses that provide the best product at the most reasonable price. Producers thrive when they are best able to meet the needs of consumers. Businesses that have difficulty meeting those needs or charge too much for their products have to make adjustments in order to avoid going out of business. All right, pause for a moment and refine your answer to the question at the beginning of this section. But what does a market economy mean for the different stakeholders? Well, for entrepreneurs, this system provides the opportunity to earn money and profit from their vision and hard work. And since profit is generated by controlling costs and maximizing revenues, entrepreneurs are incentivized to use their resources efficiently and produce goods and services that will sell. But how do consumers benefit? Because these businesses are trying to sell goods and services that meet the wants and needs of the public, consumers have their choice of products that fulfill their wants and needs. Plus, producers look to constantly innovate their products in order to better meet the needs of their customers. And the impacts of market economies extend to civic life as well. 
Increasing freedom and choice in economic systems generally accompanies increasing freedom and choice in political systems. Sounds pretty great. Can you think of any potential downsides? It is important to remember that in market economies, there is little to no government intervention in economic processes. This can lead to negative outcomes for both businesses and consumers. Think about your lemonade stand, Mia. What if one of your competitors decided to use a potentially harmful ingredient to cut costs and the government had no oversight over food safety? You're right, that would be bad. Consumers couldn't be certain that their food and beverages were safe to eat, and producers would have a hard time getting the public to trust in their products. Market economies can also lead to negative outcomes like income inequality and monopolies. In our next unit, we're going to take a deeper look at those issues and how nations may deal with them. We also need to be honest. There are certain goods and services that just aren't as profitable as others. Mia, you can turn a profit selling lemonade, but what about building and operating a road? You're absolutely right. It would be expensive to build and maintain. Plus, how could you generate revenue on the road, short of charging everyone 10 bucks to drive down your portion of the road? So the chances are pretty good that entrepreneurs like yourself might not want to produce goods and services that aren't profitable. But what happens to consumers and the general public if things like roads and hospitals aren't profitable? It's entirely possible that people could be forced to go without these vital goods and services just because they aren't profitable. Finally, it's essential to remember there is a certain amount of risk that comes with running a business. Because individuals are making decisions about economic production in a market economy, businesses may be slow to adjust to changing market conditions. This could lead to business failure. Think about some of your competitors, Mia. I'm sure they thought that a robot running a lemonade stand would never work, so some of those competitors continued with business as usual. But you were able to offer a better product at a better price. Eventually, they lost their market share to you because they didn't adapt to the changes. Exactly. It's essential to keep up with what is happening in the market. Okay, let's take a moment to check in. How would you explain the pros and cons of a market economy? Pause the video for a moment while you answer. Some of the pros of market economies include the freedom for entrepreneurs to profit, efficient use of resources, and product innovation. But some cons include a lack of government oversight, under-provision of certain goods, and business failure to adapt to changing market conditions. Woo, that was quite a bit. Mabel Market Force is running for office and advocating for a full market economy. According to her plan, individual entrepreneurs would answer the three basic economic questions with almost no government intervention. In this market, consumers would be free to choose what goods and services they bought and who they bought them from. Forces like demand, supply, and competition would influence how producers and consumers interact with each other to drive the economy. This system would allow entrepreneurs to allocate resources efficiently and seek to constantly improve their product in order to best meet the wants and needs of consumers. It would also provide consumers with plenty of choices about what goods and services were available to them. But the lack of government participation and oversight could lead to negative outcomes for stakeholders and certain goods and services might not be produced. Plus, producers that were slow to adjust to market conditions could end up going out of business. Tomorrow, we're going to look at a candidate advocating for an economic system at the opposite end of the spectrum. But until then, keep investing in yourself one lesson at a time.
I'll see you next time. Hey.